Hi everyone, this is Michelle from Susan Spice and Everything Nice coming back with one of my favorite Haitian recipes called Piklis. It's spicy, it's crunchy, it's acidity, and so deliciousy, which I know is not a word, but when something is so good, you come up with any kind of way to describe it. It's kind of like a relish to accompany any savory dish, but most importantly, those fried foods like grill, tasso, banan pizze, or marinade. Well, let's get things started by going over the ingredients. We've got a few fresh limes, some shredded cabbage, matchstick carrots, sliced bell peppers, distilled white vinegar, sliced onions, salt, and jiwaf, aka cloves. Now for further detailed instructions on this recipe and ingredients, please visit my website susanspice.com, which is listed in the description box. Now pardon me, but I kind of like going the easy slash lazy way out of things when it comes to prep. I've got here some pre-shredded cabbage. Now traditionally, Haitian Piklis uses freshly sliced cabbage that is sliced much finer and smaller than this but I prefer a bigger crunch and this works just fine for me. Now as you go through the package, remove any large shredded blades like these. You want your piquis to be as uniform as possible. You're not eating a salad and these big blades don't help. As you see here, these are all the big cabbage blades I removed from the package. Go ahead and discard these and you should be left with something that looks like this. Next, I have some matchstick carrots, another huge time saver than sitting and shredding carrots by hand. Now here you can use as little or as much as you'd like. I have a couple of bell peppers here and you can use any color of your choice. I won't be using the whole thing, just a couple pieces of it. I will say that in some traditional Haitian piquilis, like the ones in some Haitian restaurants, bell peppers aren't usually in them. But my mom usually puts them in her piquilis and so does my grandma. And since I love bell peppers, I'll be using them too. I think it adds such vibrant color to the piquilis and makes it so much more appetizing. Be sure to remove the fleshy membranes from the insides as well as the seeds. I'll be slicing these thin, and like I've mentioned before, you can use as much or as little as you'd like. Also, because I don't want them too long, I'll be slicing them in half. Now that I have all my bell peppers cut and sliced, I'll be setting them aside. Here I have an onion. You can use either yellow or white. And since this is a fairly large onion, I'll only be using about half of it for this piquilis. Once I remove the outer layer, I'll also slice these thinly. Once the onions are sliced, go through and separate the layers like so. Now let's combine all of our vegetables. In a bowl, add in the cabbage, the carrots, bell peppers, and onions. Be sure to mix this well. I'm 
I'm going to transfer all the vegetables into a glass jar because I plan on having this over the next week or so. However, please feel free to skip this step and add in the liquid which we'll be working on soon directly into the bowl. That's what we would usually do when we knew the entire batch would be gone in one sitting. But in the jar, I'm adding the vegetables and alternating with some giwaf or cloves. And I will admit, cloves are an optional ingredient here. It will seem like there won't be enough space in this jar for all the vegetables, but trust me, I'll get them to fit in later. Now let's work on the spicy liquid. Here I've got a lime. Well, you'll notice is how firm this lime is. If you try to juice them like this, you won't get much liquid out of it. My little trick is to roll it against a firm surface in the palm of my hand like so. This will help soften it and produce a lot more juice. See how squishy it is now compared to before? You can definitely see the extra juice coming from this lime once I cut it. The next step is to simply juice all the limes. Next, I'll transfer all the lime juice into my small blender. I will also add some hot habanero peppers to it. I unfortunately didn't have any fresh ones and so I'm using habanero peppers from my Pima Book or Haitian hot pepper sauce. To this, I will also add in some salt and vinegar prior to blending. Traditionally, a fresh scotch or hot habanero pepper is very thinly sliced and added to the vegetable rather than blending. I personally do it this way because it evenly distributes the heat throughout the pickles. I have in the past, more than once, fallen victim to that slither of pepper sitting directly on my tongue. And let me tell you, although I love Pima, I was not able to handle that direct heat. So please, do what you prefer. Thinly slice fresh hot peppers in, or blend them. Either way works fine. In my case, I'll be blending the hot peppers, the lime juice, the salt, and the vinegar. Once completely blended through, you'll pour the liquid into the jar of cabbage and vegetables. If you were doing it directly into the bowl and without the blended method, you'd simply add in the thinly sliced peppers, lime juice, vinegar, and sprinkle in salt directly on the vegetables. In the jar, we'll add in additional vinegar not completely to the top because we will need room to add in the rest of the vegetables. As the cabbage sits in the liquid, it will shrink giving you more space for the rest. A few minutes later, I've got plenty of space to add in the rest.
As the pickles absorbs the spicy liquid, you can taste some of the cabbage for spiciness and salt. You can add in more hot peppers and or salt to taste. Here, I'm going to shake it up a bit to make sure the flavor is fully distributed. In reality, you're supposed to let this sit for a few days prior to eating it, but honestly, that never happens here. Once the flavor is on point, we start eating it right away. Well, that's pretty much it guys. My personal take on Haitian pickles. If you're a fan of spicy food, trust me, you'll love this one. Please be sure to visit my website susanspice.com for more delicious recipes and thank you for watching.